Let's go and make a journal entry as of uh, 08, <clears throat> let's say 30 two five and we're going to say that this is going to be an expense account which is going to be uh, what do we want to call it amazon charges amazon charges i'll just make up an expense account you can put it in the cost of goods sold uh if you want i'm just going to put it in the expense for now uh so so you you could put it into cost of goods sold though, but I'm going to say, let's say other business Amazon charges. And we're going to say that was for 209.83, 209.83. And the other side is going to go into the Amazon sales, sales, Amazon. So this will increase the Amazon sales with a credit because it goes up with a credit. And the Amazon charges will be an expense account, which you could put into cost of goods sold. And I'll save and close and back to the income statement. And so now we've just basically said, okay, that should tie out to my 1099. So the IRS is happy. And, and then I'm just assuming that the difference was charges of some kind that I lumped into charges. And then down here, we've got the net income, which basically is the same in either case. So we just adjusted it to get the top line to, to match what is being reported as sales, assuming that that is the correct thing to do. That would be the easiest thing to do, but you don't get a lot of detail in terms of what the actual charges were. And that's not ideal, especially for internal bookkeeping purposes. Also, if you had sales tax that you needed to track, then uh, you're gonna have to come up with some way to do that. Although with the Amazon, situation amazon might be responsible for a lot more of the sales tax situations than if you were in a shopify kind of situation now the next method is we can say okay i'm going to pull this information in and enter a journal entry according to this whole detail that i pulled in every two weeks that i'm going to pull in related to the deposits and it's summarizing multiple sales so it's not like i'm pulling in every transaction but i'm going to take my deposit detail and, and try to get my financial statements to have more information. So then I'm going to enter a transaction that looks more like this. So let's pull this in, in and do that method. So I'm going to go back on over and we'll do this on uh, 9-1. So now I'm going to enter a journal entry. So we're going to do the same thing again with a different method this time to tie out to this deposit. So we'll say let's enter a journal entry. And I'm just going to go through each of these line items on, and I'm going to going to make up an account for it to go to. So each of these line items, we did this in a prior presentation. We decided that all of these items that make up that deposit is going to be going into these accounts. So if I don't have these accounts, I will make them up as I go. So we've got Amazon charges. So Amazon, Amazon charges let's do that this is going to be as of by the way 09 let's say 30 2, 5. and that's going to be 90 26 9 0 0.26 and then we've got amazon charges a couple more times so we'll say amazon charges again this is going to be 16 on the credit 16 was that even Steven and then again that's not Amazon charges K the heck Paso Amazon Amazon on charges Amazon charges all right don't be messing up like that Amazon charges again and this one's going to go to 17. Do I really have to deal with these pennies crying out loud? All right. Then we're on Amazon, uh, FBA fees. All right. Amazon, Amazon FBA fees. I'm going to say tab and I'm going to set that up again. We could put it in a cost of goods sold account or an expense account. I'm just going to expense them for now. 
Uh, it's you know, so I won't get into the details on that. And and we'll look at the custom where like the integration for for Amazon within QuickBooks automatically sets up the accounts later. And I think they put it to uh, cost of goods sold. So and we'll take a look at that later. But I'm just going to put it into other expense. There it is. Boom. And that's going to be for uh, $87, 87. And then we're going to say that we're on Amazon sales. All right. Amazon sales. Boom. Oh, hold on a second. Don't I have a sale? Sales Amazon. There we go. And that one is for, that should be a credit. It's going to be for Amazon uh, 701. All right, 701. So it's quite of a tedious activity to do this, but Amazon refunds. All right. Am Amazon refunds. All right, let's add it. I'm going to say it's going to be an income account because this is going to be a contra income account for the refunds that come back to us. So I'm going to say other primary income, Amazon refunds. And that was for 99.88. So 99.88, is that right? 98, 98. Pick it up correctly. All right, and the next one is seller uh, fees and charges again. All right, so I'm gonna say Amazon charges. And that one, $3. They're just nitpicking me. Nickel and diamond, nickel and diamond me to death. Just like the IRS does. Amazon, Amazon charges. Amazon charges 108. All right, 1.08. Okay, and then we've got Amazon shipping income. Amazon shipping income. I'll make up an account. It's going to be an income type of account because this is what we're charging for the shipping. We're collecting the shipping in this case. So I'm going to say other income, Amazon shipping. Boom. Shaka Laka. $21. $21. And then we got Amazon shipping again. So Ultravase, Amazon shipping income and this one is 11 on the debit side 11 something 1144 i can't remember four numbers 1133 1133 amazon shipping again i should be able to rem remember seven numbers at a time isn't that what the memories amazon shipping you're supposed to be able to remember that's why the phone numbers are that long you can't even remember. 939. 9.3. Oh, hold on a sec. 9.39. All right. And then we've got Amazon sales tax payable. All right. Amazon sales tax payable. I'll add that. That's going to be a liability because these are going to be the sales taxes that we... Uh, are getting paid that we're probably going to have to remit to the government remembering 